Now we're going to be working on Greening Co again. And this time we're going to try and get an effect where we've got the wood grain or the surface of a desktop with a floating item on top. And we'll see what we can find. So we're looking at kind of top down angle if we can find a suitable image. So let's have a look. Once again, I'm going to create a custom design with custom sizes. And this time I'm going to go with 800 by 800. Plenty of size to work with. What we're going to be creating now is an item with a transparent background, which will then apply onto an existing image in the Squarespace website. If that doesn't make sense just yet. It will do when we start assembling it. Let's see if we can find an example of a top down mug here that we can work with. So this one, I'm not sure if it's cropping off on the left here, but that could work. So by trying to use this as a banner image, it's just not the space around it. This one's not ideal because it's cropped off there, but also we've got a photo filter on it as well, which I want to avoid. So I'm going to have a look through, see if there's any other options available in here. If we expand it to Unsplash or Adobe, we might find more options. This one could work. We may have to just adjust the color settings later to give it a bit more punch. There we go. So I'm really scaling it up so it, it will fill that page. I can always zoom right out and then bring the handles in so we've got, we're cropping it much closer in on the, the mug itself. Double click on it then to select that cropped area. I can zoom back in once again. And now this is a little bit easier to play around with. I'm not sure on the angle, so I might just rotate it. But then I just want to get it so we get the highlights where I want them. Now this could double up quite nicely as a magnifying glass. So maybe there's something we could do because the image of the mug from top down could work quite nicely there. So next up, we're actually going to need to crop it out from the background. So we've got a built in wonderful background remover tool on Canva. I love this tool. It works very, very well most of the time. Having said that, it probably won't work in this instance and then we'll have to find another photo, but let's give this a try first. Now that's pretty good. What this allows us to do now is to save this on a transparent background, meaning it will float on top of this, whatever surface we put it on. Now what we could also do is add a little bit of a drop shadow using a radial gradient. Doesn't matter which one we choose necessarily. Send that to the back. That's why it doesn't matter which color scheme we go with at the start with. We can change them as long as it gives us that option here. So we're just going to go with simple black and black in the middle to make sure there's no other colors coming through. And then we're just going to offset it as shown there. What we can do now is change the opacity of that drop shadow. So I don't want it overly strong. So I'm just going to take it down to something around 60%, give or take. And that will just give it a nice drop shadow. Bearing in mind that this will not be on a white background. It'll be on a transparent background. So now we've done that, we can go in and edit this image and just have a look at all of the adjustments. Here we can bump up the saturation and the contrast. Maybe take the brightness down a little bit so it jumps out. If you don't like the color, we're going to have some issues here because the contents obviously will change. So if we change the tint so we can change the color of the, the coffee mug, we're also changing the color of the coffee. 
as well. So we could probably tweak it a tiny bit, but not a huge amount. So even then by moving it three or minus three, we're going into the, the yellow. So I think we're gonna leave the tint as is, but what we could do if we edit this image, we could add a filter. So let's have a look at these filters, see if there's anything that gives it a bit more color to it. Let's have a look at this deer option here. And then maybe just take, you can see the real difference there when we take the intensity down to zero and then hundred percent is way too much, but let's bring it up to about 30%, a bit more punch in the photo. Okay. So now we've got that mug in place. We've got the drop shadow underneath it. Let's now download this. Now this is where it's essential to pick both PNG and with a transparent background. We now download our mug and head over to our green and co site. And we'll put this as a hero unit at the top of the about section or in between the about title and the content. So we're going to go with something like this option here. And we're going to go into the settings, change it to a medium height. Now we're going to go and choose a background image. So we're going to remove that photo and browse free stock images. And have a look for wood surface. So we're after something with a bit of grain in it. We'll try that one. See how that one looks. What I'm going to do is desaturate it so that the mug really stands out on the background and it doesn't fight with it too much. So we go into the image editor on here. You could download this photo, put it into Canva and get your settings as you want them on there. I'm going to reduce the contrast and bring down the brightness as well. Instantly I'm looking at this and the grain's too close in. So the effect we're going to go for isn't going to really work because it's going to look like it's a teeny tiny mug on a large background. So this is where there might be a degree of trial and error. So another option might be something like a slate surface instead. We don't need surface in the search. There we go. Maybe this one here. So it's like a slate worktop with a mug sat on it. Now, initially we can see it's portrait, which means that it's going to zoom in closer again. So we're going to have the same issue with just way too much detail. So we can edit this image. And this is where we can rotate it. And then I'm going to crop it to 16 by nine. Again, it's still probably going to be a little bit close in. So there might be a little bit more trial and error. We're after a quite a sophisticated effect here. I'm going to jump back in and edit it one more time. This time we're just going to take the contrast down. I don't want as much detail coming through on the surface. So that's one way of doing it. I can also use the color overlay option with a black overlay, which will just give a little bit of texture coming through. If I'm being honest, I'm not overly happy with this photo, but we've got to pick one. So we'll, we'll stick with this one and I'm just going to bump up the overlay opacity or that already makes it much better. So now we've got a, more of a subtle backdrop. So when we go and add in our image, and now we upload our mug. Fingers crossed it's saved. 
from Canva as it should. Okay. So not perfect. This drop shadow here isn't black and we've got a little bit of halo around the mug itself. I'll just drop it in just to give you an existing idea. Now with this particular layout, it's only on medium width, which we need to move it up to large to get the full width and the full effect that we're after. And then we can resize the image. What we can also do is add a spacer in between the text content and our mug just to get a nice gap in there. So you can see now already the style we're going for. So what happens is when we, when we go, say for example, to even mobile size, we can see the image goes below. And then as we scale the website up or down in between, we can see that image is adjusting with it. We can't achieve that effect if it's just one photo. So let's just, for our final step, see if we can pop back into Canva and just fix those other remaining issues. Sometimes it can be fiddly to get hold of that background. So I might just send that to the back just for now. Grab this texture. And it's probably because of this white. So if I change them all to black, we can see that's a difference again. I'm going to take the opacity right down. I just want the slightest of drop shadows. And then send that to the back. The other thing we need to do as well is we can see that that drop shadow is off the edge of the artwork and that's why we had a cut line on the end. So if that's all in the bounding box, that should work better. Okay, we're going to give it one more try after we just reduce that graphic size down a little bit more so it's a bit more focused and concentrated around the mug. Now send it to back again. That's the important step. And then download. Again, it's remembered the settings this time, so that's good. Head over to our website, and this should be the final step. So we replace the photo, upload, choose our new version. And there we go. Got that nice sharp image now. We've got a very, very subtle but nice drop shadow. So we could go back in and play with the settings a bit more, make that a bit more obvious for our shadow. Uh, I think I might have reduced it a little bit too much. But that, in, in essence, is how we can go with images alongside text. And another thing we could do is just make that a little bit bigger to give it a bit more impact. if we reduce it to a small height, it makes it more compact around it. If I was to do this again, I'd definitely put more of a drop shadow below the mug. And I'd probably find another surface that's not zoomed in quite as far. The texture is nice, but it's just a little bit too much. And the, the grain is too big, really, for, the, for an ideal scenario. But what we've got now is a really nice, flexible image sliding over top of the background, meaning that when we jump between desktop and mobile, it still works beautifully. If it was just one image, we'd have to choose a focal point on part of the image. And so sometimes this is a feature that we use quite regularly. See you in the next chapter.